I want to take a second to acknowledge the collective fear and pain I know many of us are feeling during this tough time. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I feel you. I am here for you. I know it's scary facing the unknown. This is an unprecedented time in our history, and I'm here to be the optimist and the voice of positivity. I've always been an optimist. Honestly, you know, people even get triggered by my optimism sometimes. Um, someone said to me the other day, like, the world is ending and Allie's over here talking about vitamins. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not going to shut up about it because I believe in their power to heal. I believe in the body's ability to heal itself if given the tools it needs to do so. Um, on this show, you guys have heard countless stories of people reversing absolute, you know, death sentences from stage four cancer to chronic conditions, um, diabetes, all kinds of things. So there's no reason why we all can't survive and thrive during this pandemic. So yeah, I've always been positive and all I can say is when there is negativity, I immediately go for the positive. I've been like this my whole life. When there's a perceived failure, instead of taking it in and going, oh, I did everything wrong, I look at it as a learning opportunity and as an opportunity to grow. Um, when I get sick, I get really excited. I'm like, what holistic cures am I going to order today? Um, I, I love starting a healing protocol to bring myself back to health. And if someone else is sick, I'm there to be, you know, the positive sidekick, the comic relief. I try to find them funny movies, make them laugh, try to make them take lots of vitamins, make them garlic milkshakes that they may or may not want, much to their dismay very often, I would say, and just give them all the positive and healing energy that I can, because I think, you know, hopefully it can rub off. And when someone is dying, I just think, how can we celebrate their life and honor them so hard? With both of my parents, we had funerals, but we called them celebrations of life because that is all we can do at that time. And so when I've lost other people over the years, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, what are the great things that we can do to celebrate these people? I know I may not be the norm, but now is the time more than ever to begin to practice optimism, kindness, and love. So I challenge you, each and every one of you, instead of looking at this entire situation from a place of fear, to look at it from a place of love and to begin to think about how we can all spread kindness and not feed into the massive amount of negativity that's out there right now. doesn't mean you ignore what's going on, but don't feed into the negativity. Be very careful with your thoughts and your words. There are so many people in need right now. People are suffering. There are more people than ever that need our help, our words of encouragement, and our strength. And they need our kindness and our grace. Be kind to everyone you see. If you're at the grocery store, don't take the last of anything. That is scarcity mentality. I want to live in an abundance mentality. And there's someone out there who needs that thing more than you. So leave it for them. Spreading kindness makes us feel better, and when we feel good, our immune system is instantly boosted and we're less likely to get sick. So think about what you can do to spread kindness. If you have an elderly person in your neighborhood, go buy him or her groceries. If you have a local business you love, buy a gift card from them online, even if they're closed. This could help them stay afloat while they're losing customers. If you have friends or loved ones you haven't connected with in a while, send them a letter. The mail still works as of today. If not, you could do a text or a tweet or a phone call. Remember those? Just be, be open to spreading kindness and love and not fear. Don't feed into it. I'm on so many group texts right now that are just all fear-based. Article after article, scare tactic after scare tactic, like the world is ending, and I don't believe the world is ending. I believe we're going to get through this. So be the voice of positivity on those group texts. You know, the truth is no one knows the outcome of what's going to happen. But one thing I do know is that everything that's going on in our personal lives is a reflection of what we believe. If we believe we're going to get sick, we will get sick. If we believe we're going to lose money, or lose our job, or lose our clients, we will create that. We are the creators of our own reality. We and we alone are solely responsible for everything present in our lives. 
I'm not saying that any one of us manifested the coronavirus, okay? But we are in charge of how we respond to it. Believe you will be okay. And you will be okay. Believe that this is an opportunity for your business to grow and thrive. And it will. And please, please, turn off the news. Let me be your source of news. (laughs) You know, go for positive news. Listen to Erica Mandy, (laughs) thenewsworthy.com. Take your vitamins. I'm going to do my entire vitamin healing protocol on the next episode. I'm also giving you the healing protocols that the doctors I am talking to will be prescribing for you, for their patients with or without coronavirus. So for prevention, for immunity boosting, and if you have it. So that's coming up. Stay tuned. But there are many things that we can do. Colloidal silver kills viruses on contact. Can I tell you right now that it's going to kill the coronavirus? No, I don't know. No one knows. But what if it does? Take it. It can't hurt. (laughs) It's natural. It's good for you. Take garlic, elderberry, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin K, chlorella, and spirulina. That is your starter kit. CBD, if you need to calm down. CBDfountain.com is Susie's site. Go check it out. She makes it all herself. It's organic. It's vegan. It's good for you. Hoard vitamins, not toilet paper, right? This is a great opportunity to get healthy. If you're like me and maybe you're not worried about contracting the virus, but you're more concerned with the economic impact on your lives, on your business, I really, really hope that my story can inspire you. So not that I've been through a pandemic before, but I have been through an economic downturn and come out of it better than ever. So I started Melody Productions, which is my film production business that I've had, you know, I believe over 15 years now. I I need to do the math. Um, Maybe someone can do it for me. But, you know, I started small, little clients here and there, but it did not become um, a large business until about 2009. But when I really, really started it, It was right after I lost both of my parents to cancer. I lost all of their homes. They had multiple homes to foreclosure. And I found out that the estate was broke. This was right in the midst of the 2008 financial crisis. So it was starting in 2007 and building up into 2008. My dad died in 2007. And during that time, you know, I had a few clients, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to say that I had a thriving business. But Melody Productions had started. Um, But I woke up one day and I had nothing. I was negative in my bank account when I booked my first big client, the client that would pay my rent for the next, I believe, you know, 12 years or something like that. I didn't have a bank loan. I didn't have anywhere to start. I just had knowledge and tenacity and I realized that no one was going to help me out. I didn't have mom and dad to ask for help anymore. Um, I didn't have a bank account to fall back on. I didn't have anything. And I was able to build a thriving business at a time when banks weren't giving loans, at a time where I literally had nothing. I was grieving the loss of my parents. Um, It was the hardest time of my life. And I didn't have a penny to my name. You know, if you want to read the full story, I've talked about it on the show before. It's in my book, Food Heal, so check that out. Um, but I built that business when it seemed like that would have been impossible, when it seemed like there was no way I was going to make it, when I did have visions of myself being homeless on the street because I didn't know where I was going to live or how I was going to pay rent. So I just invite you if you're worried about your your livelihood, your business, your income, your job, yeah, you, you might be affected and it might take time to come back from it. But this is such an opportunity to start having new ideas, to start having, you know, you could get new clients at this time who need the service that you have who before didn't have time for it, but now they do. So as things are slowing down and we're all staying home to watch this play out, What a wonderful time to reflect on your current life. Ask yourself, am I truly happy? Um, What is it it that I would do every single day if money wasn't a problem or an option, if, if it wasn't involved, you know? What would life look like if I was in radiant, perfect health? 
And amidst what seems like utter chaos, there's just such massive opportunity right now. I really want you to see that. I really want you to believe that. I really want you to understand what's possible. There's so much opportunity to reflect on your current life and make changes. So much opportunity to spend more time with your kids, your spouses, your loved ones. You know, those that live in the household with you, I'm still all about practicing the social distancing, but the ones that you don't live with, send a letter, send a text, send a tweet. What opportunity there is to finally start that online business if you haven't yet. Thank God for my online business in a time like this. There's so much opportunity to dust off that guitar and finally learn to play that musical instrument, whatever it is that you've been putting off. Um, What an opportunity to cook all those recipes from that vegan cookbook you bought and haven't had time to use. What an opportunity to practice meditation and get in touch with ourselves at a deeper level. And for me, one of the things that brings me, you know, the most peace, the most joy, and and really inspires me creatively is music. If you're a singer like me or any type of musician, you know that music to us is like what meditation is to yogis. It's like, it's like spiritual experience. Like you never feel better than when you're singing or playing an instrument or, or even listening to music for many people or dancing for many people. So It's been, I think it's been five nights now where I've spent a few hours um, on my piano uh, and it was, it's a keyboard. So I dusted it off. I took it out of the closet. I put it up in my living room and, you know, I haven't played in years. I taught myself to play Someone Like You by Adele and Million Reasons by Lady Gaga. And I've got a couple more I started working on that are a little harder, but wow, it's like, I forget how easily, you know, my fingers can learn to play something and my musical ability is there and it's just so fun to figure it out and it brings me so much joy and then when you're sitting there so focused on something, like when I'm so focused on that music, my brain can't possibly sit there and be in worry or fear or in anxiety. In fact, I'm feeling peace and joy and excitement and seeing my hands learn the notes and play them while my brain is figuring out how to sync it all together with the lyrics. It's like fascinating and it's fun and it takes me out and it brings me joy. So what can bring you joy? When I'm in a state of joy, my body is alkaline, which means my immunity is up and I'm less likely to get sick. It's the same for you. You know, what brings you joy? I also, I host a lot of karaoke, um, a lot of you guys know, and I just, I got back from Orlando from an amazing event where I got to host and all the people on the stage, it just brings me joy to people, see people in their element, to see people sing. Um, But we couldn't do it this weekend because, you know, the bars are closed and they're telling us, let's practice social distancing, which I support. And I'm going to I'm going to do what they want me to do. So I hosted a virtual karaoke party this weekend just to get everyone's minds out of fear and into joy. And look, the sound wasn't good. We did it on Zoom. It's not like you're in a bar and you can hear yourself. It was just a place where everyone could express themselves, cheer each other on, sing and get out of that fear mindset, even just for two hours. So just think about Food Heals Nation. What can you do this week to bring you joy even when times are tough? What can you do to spread kindness and help others in need? Feel free to let me know. I want to hear. Let's all collectively brainstorm how to support each other during this scary time in our history. Together, we will get through this. Food Heals Nation, I love you. I'm here for you. And I've got lots more to come. See you next time, Food Heals Nation.